Can we just take this moment to acknowledge how beefy of a semi cab Gale here is? Gale Boffer, Jackson Storms semi cab. I mean, it's pretty sweet. Like, this is a muscle car of a semi truck, and seeing the prototype here kind of accentuates those qualities. Like, compared to the other style of next gen semi cab, I mean, this guy's got. A lot of girth on low gear Smythe here, for example, and definitely Mac. Like, I can't even show you guys Mac because Mac would be too terrified to be up next to Gale here. I mean, Gale is big, and you don't really think about it or you know, really kind of notice it until you have them here in person. But yeah, guys, welcome back to Prototype Prestige. Very excited to get into this episode, episode 23 for Gail Bofford here, or however you pronounce her last name. I've always struggled with it, but it is cool that at least they gave her a name. They don't do that for every hauler, even the more important ones. Like Chick Hicks has only that fan-made name of Rod Tango. I have no idea where that came from. I'm pretty sure it's not official. But yeah, some haulers unfortunately never get that kind of special attention. But we're going to give a lot of attention to Gale today with this prototype, the second next-gen semi-cab I reviewed in this series. Of course, earlier on, I did the John Halstead prototype, or it could even be for Low Gear Smythe, or really any next-gen semi-cab could be for the Marty Hauler as well. The only one it can't be for is Gale, because obviously, like we've established, that's a different model, and... I have a prototype for the Dynaco Cruise hauler that got canceled. And this is different from the one I just showed you because the grill slats are going horizontally instead of vertically and there is no mouth. So there you have it. Really cool that I have a prototype of a canceled car, even though they've attempted to release her now multiple times and have canceled her every single time. So I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, Cruise's hauler never even appears in the movie Anyways, all right, so yes, I have to say I like those other ones more than this one. This one's still cool, but the white base color kind of is a detractor for me. I don't know, you guys know I love my exotic colors, and this guy still has them, like just on the plastic parts for sure. Oh my god, let's not bash them together though. But this prototype does have quite a few chips, so I'm not too worried regardless. And yeah, it gives it some good character. But you have the light green hat up here, whatever you want to call it, in plastic. It really is weird how such a small space is between the body and the hats here. Barely gives you any room to see her eyes in there. But yeah, they are visible. It probably was difficult to apply that decal. Or if I'm a wagering man, maybe they apply that decal and then they apply the plastic hat on top. That would make sense. But yeah, as we kind of talked about in the John Halstead video, it's really cool to see all the metal lining that goes into these that kind of gets overshadowed when you, you know, toss all the decals on her, for example, here. But yeah, just really nice how everything kind of bevels in stuff that you wouldn't really give much thought to, but it's accentuated when there's, you know, nothing going on. It's just blank white. The base here is a nice green. And you got turquoise tires. So in three pieces, you have three different greens. This, the hat, and the base. No markings at all on the base, just like John. Actually, no, didn't John have some markings? Oh, yeah, John had all sorts of markings. Interesting, interesting. This guy doesn't have any. But, yeah, you do have the holes for where this would attach to the hauler package. You got the rivets in there as well. Bright orange tires here again, just like on John. These look very similar in color. So it must be a next-gen semi-cab thing, although my other one has a little bit lighter color orange and a pink-purple base, which is really awesome. Yeah, good stuff there. And then another plastic piece for the insert where the trailer would go into. That is a nice orange. And you know what? Let's... Let's give it a ride here, shall we? See if it actually works. I'm sure I'll never be able to get that out again. That sounded like it went in there good. Oh man, that looks just so wrong. <laughs> this looks so wrong, guys. I, I can't take it anymore. Please. All right, so we, we were able to get it out of there. I would have been mad if that was stuck in there. Unfortunately, no prototype trailer for you guys. Those kind of like the plastic accessories 
you know, we were talking about the fire barrel with breaker bogs and whatnot. Anything plastic just does not really get leaked out as a prototype. It's happened in the past. I do have a full Mac prototype, semi cab and trailer included, but it is not common for that to happen. If it's plastic, and especially if it's small, it's lost, it's not produced as much, it's not tested as much. For whatever reason, those don't leak out and are not available as frequently for sale. But if they are, then that's a big deal. It's a big deal. But yeah, really cool, really cool. I actually have another one of these. So I'm recording this on January 15th, right? I don't know when you're watching this, but it's probably not January 15th or anywhere remotely close to it. I pre-record a bunch of these prototype prestige episodes because I, you know, do the sap in the background. I take all the thumbnails at the same time and it's just way more efficient that way than to, you know, you know, set this up every time I want to do one episode. And at the time I recorded this, I only have this one, but I did happen to be able to somehow get another one just like this. I think it's identical. Obviously, it's probably chipped differently, but it's got the same coloring on all the pieces. So interesting there and kind of goes back to the point, like a lot of these prototypes, you know, there is at least one, well, there's likely to be multiple of any prototype that you see, right? But the real question lies in how many leak out and end up being sold, right? Like that Bessie that we did, there might be a hundred, there might've been. Now, I mean, who knows, right? There's maybe only two that have actually surfaced to the media and have been available to sale for collectors, right? So that's honestly where the value of prototypes really come into play. A lot of those ones that were on eBay over the last couple of years, the you know white and black Sarge, the white Carlo Veloso, the white and pink River Scott, the Tex Dynaco and the dark blue, there's like dozens of those. And even though they're legit, very cool prototypes, there's a lot of them available. And even though there might be a lot of this available or made, they're not available. You know what I mean? So prototypes are weird like that. It's very different from like the actual releases where everything that they put out is available, you know, in some way, shape or form. Maybe it's available in Australia. Maybe it's available in Canada, whatever. It's still out there at retail to be sold. And so the valuation and how the market responds to that is different than for prototypes. So it's a really kind of intricate market that I love to study. And unfortunately, by doing these videos, it actually makes them more expensive because now more people talk about them, more people find them interesting, more people want to buy them and it drives the price up. But I think it's worth it because I love doing these videos. I love trying to inform you guys and get you guys on the prototype bang wagon. It's one of my favorite facets of the hobby as a whole. I love collecting these things and it makes it way more interesting for me, you know, when I have I don't have anything to like go back to 2008 to try and get. It's not like I missed, oh, I need to get boost with the impound boot. No, I already got that when I was 8 years old. So now can kind of focus on some of these other things. So anyways, guys, thank you as always for watching. I don't have anything else to say. So what the hell? I'll let you guys go. As always, appreciate the support, especially on this series. It's a little bit more of a niche series, so it means a lot. Bye now. Sun's gone.